<laughs> Here we go, baby. She's new. Don't even look part of oh! every story you tell. Oh! Her in her shoes. He's new. Hey, what was that? Boo. What was that? You can hide, but I will find you. Close your eyes if you <laughs> don't you don't like Hold your breath so I can feel you. The trail of tears that you were reading. She's got a nice voice. Every precaution, babe. Get out the caution tape. Cause the timer is ticking down. Do you even understand? Love this song. The danger is so good. You're standing on shaky ground. A victim is crying. A victim is crying. I'm in pain. No, no, it's the best. It's all by design. Ladies and gentlemen, Woo! welcome to the 75th annual Honey Queen pageant. Honey Queen, you fill my heart <laughs> with sunny things. To bloom, baby! The rarest honey jean, never too proud or coy. Honey Queen, you are the one who sets the scene. <laughs> you everything and in between, you fill my heart with joy. But Queen, why'd you walk away from me without a care to dispose of me like I was hatchet dragged? Hatchet what? You swine! <laughs> you think you'd get away with this? Turn me down without a glimpse of hell, a shrouded spite! That's right! Honey Queen, <laughs> this pair of classic song. Certainly bounce around in my head like a busy bee. But you I feel my think way. heart that way. Genius. With joy. Joy. Here we go, baby. 
Summer's here, folks. The bees are busy in their hives, and yellow is very much in season. It's that time of year again. Time for the Hatchet Field Honey Festival. This gets me all the time. On a 70 Got a funny face. 4K TV <laughs> screen, Dan Reynolds, co-host of Morning Cup of News, <laughs> that winning smile. Work's already begun to transform downtown into the most anticipated street fair in the Midwest. That's right, Clivesdale. No one wants to go to your stupid cherry festival. And of course, the whole town is a buzzing, wondering which local lady Who's will be crowned this year's honey queen, the sweetest woman Broadway. in Ashfield. Next to the TV, thing. four blonde boys Agus. stand staring at an electrical Us, outlet, repeating, "Do it, do it, do it, yeah, do it, do it." Just stick it in a socket. The three bigger boys crowd around their younger brother. Looks like River. Draco Malfoy's a wig. Metal fork in his hand. I'm scared. We all did it. Don't be a wimp. You have to do it. Or you can't be our brother anymore. Really? Yeah. Mom and Dad will get rid of you for being a chicken. They'll throw you off the Nantucket Bridge. Mommy wouldn't do that. You sure? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. River holds do down it. the fork and closes his eyes. But before the utensil reaches the plug, the six-year-old's mother swoops in. Linda Monroe raises oh! her river's hand and glares at the others. Oh, am I interrupting something? <laughs> I'm just playing. Really? This is a game to you? Joe! What? She tosses the fork to her Who's own Joe? son. Your turn, Trent. Do it. Uh. <laughs> Shut up, Seaton. You're already on my shit list. Do it, Trent, or you can't be my son anymore. I'm really sorry, Mommy. Excuse me. That's Mrs. Monroe to you from now on. The three of you, get in your suits now. Why doesn't Jeff Blim have a blonde wig? I hate whiners. Move. Later, River stands atop the toilet in his parents' bathroom. Linda runs a comb through his blonde hair. They told me if I didn't do it, you'd throw me off the Nantucket Bridge. Well, your brothers are liars, like all men. <laughs> That's my beautiful boy. Oh, River, you're my favorite. I hope the others know that. Uh, I hope the others know that. Now, where the hell is your <laughs> Study, so funny. Dr. Gerald Monroe of Interview Oh, oh Johnson, Gerald! There he is. back in his chair. Thursday. Oh, yeah, I got a uh, nose job and a tummy tuck, but I think I can squeeze you in for a consultation. How big are you looking to go? Reduction. Oh, that's a shame. Hang oh, on, I got another call. You. What? I'm working. Get your ass in the car, Gerald. I don't want to go. I don't care. <laughs> Are we some kind of masochists? I don't like him. You don't like him. No, I love him. Well, then you go. I'll see him at his funeral. You're just jealous because I respect him. Now get off the damn phone. Here we go. Into the lair of the devil himself. Where are they going? Minutes later, an ornate door swings open into the entryway of the Murray Estate. Trent, Seton, Jordan, and River run into the open arms of a stately man with silver hair. Grandpa! Grandpa! Boys! The kids bounce around <laughs> Linda's father, Roman Murray. Do you have any money for us? Money, money, money! No, no, no! Of course! Roman removes a wad of hundreds from his pocket and starts doling them out as Linda and Gerald enter, shaking their heads. Don't give them hundred dollar bills. Linda, it's just a bit of pocket change. Uh, Seaton, you don't get anything, and you know why. We caught him trying to buy a Playboy. Really? The Playboy! Two hundred for you, Seaton. <laughs> Two hundred for you, Seaton. Two courses into the meal, the Monroe boys have lost interest and are wrestling in the adjoining study. River is trapped in a headlock. Roman watches from the table, sipping a brandy. Come on, River, defend yourself. 
Don't be afraid to use your teeth. <laughs> I'm worried about that boy. He has no command, no swagger. At his age, I was hunting nighthawks and getting girlfriends. We don't want him to end up a doughy lump like Gerald. He won't. <laughs> I'll see to it. Between Linda and Roman, Gerald is growing increasingly perturbed. You know, Pops, uh, I think you ought to thank Linda for all the work she's been doing on this dinner cruise for the Honey Festival. I think it's going to elevate the whole event. Blow that goddamn cherry festival right out of the water, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, as president of the Hatchetfield Boating Society, Society, I wanted to do something <laughs> special. Paddle boats seem cheap. I had to tear a few new assholes, but I managed to book the SS Valiant, one of the largest luxury yachts on the Great Lakes. An elegant tour around the island with fine dining and live music. It is going to be fabulous. Oh, no one told you? The planning committee canceled the dinner cruise. What? We thought about it and figured, what the hell does a dumb boat ride have to do with honey? You didn't put down a deposit, did you? I can get it back. Then no harm, no foul. Besides, the cruise would have conflicted with the Honey Queen pageant. And that is priority number one. Ugh, the Honey Queen, please. What self-respecting woman is so desperate for validation that she'll parade around like a stripper for the pathetic ingrates of this town? The Honey Queen is the soul of Hatchetfield, and you will show her respect, Piglet. Don't call me that. I hate it when you call me that. What? Piglet? It's your nickname! Ever since you were a little girl, you should have seen her, Gerald. Before her first nose job, she had the cutest little upturned snout. <laughs> well, maybe not so little. Ha <laughs> ha! It's said with love, Piggy. Linda slams the table, springing to her feet. I am a 36-year-old woman, not a fucking barnyard animal. <laughs> the wrestling kids fall silent. Roman stares at his daughter, and a smirk creeps onto his face. Oink, oink, said the angry little piggy, and the farmer said to mock it with you. <laughs> On the car ride home, the kids are asleep in the back. Gerald's knuckles go white as he rings the steering wheel. I swear to God, Linda, one of these days, I'm going to deck him. Really? I'll believe that when I see it. I don't like the way he talks to you. Treats you like shit. But oh, the Honey Queen. She's God's gift to the earth. All the praise in the world for this theoretical woman. But none for his actual daughter. At that, something clicks in Linda's mind. Uh -oh. Smiles. A plan for me. You're right. He does respect the Honey Queen. Doesn't he? Hey, Tuts. You're my honey queen. Shut up. Days later, Linda pulls her SUV and You know what Joe's trying to do there. Field Community Center. Inside, volunteers usher a crowd of women through the process of submitting themselves for the Honey Queen pageant. Linda looks around the room, disgusted. Ugh. Look at all these people with no self-esteem. It's gross. Debasing themselves in this stupid contest. <laughs> I'm nothing like them. Hi, are you here to sign up for the pageant? Yes. Where do I do that? Right over there. If I must. At the sign-in desk, another volunteer takes down her information. <clears throat> okay. Linda Monroe. And what's your talent? My what? Your talent. I wonder where talent is. Talent portion of the show. Don't you have some kind of special skill? Something you're good at? I'm a mother. <laughs> Just then, the front doors burst open. I'm a mother! Turn, jaws drop. All eyes fall on the young woman strutting into the room. In one hand, she holds a bedazzled iPhone. In the other, a Starbucks cup. Lipstick stains lining the lid. With complete disregard for anyone else, 
She plows past the line right up to Linda at the sign-in desk. She barista? Flabbergasted, Linda watches this 23-year-old barista cut in front of her. What's her name? Zoe Chambers. Zoe. The honey queen. All right. Linda eyes Zoe up and down. It's the latte hot No. She's not competing. I won't allow it. And who are you exactly? <laughs> Linda Monroe, president of the Hatchetfield Boating Society. My father, Roman Murray, is senior member of the Honey Festival Planning Committee. He's the head judge of the competition, so don't even bother. So that's how you want to play it. Okay. Listen, lady. I'm the star actress of the Hatchetfield Community Players, and I didn't get there by being nice. <laughs> you think your daddy's gonna give you a leg up in the pageant? Well, it certainly won't hurt my chances. Won't it? Because now I know there's a judge I can seduce that you can't. Tramp. It takes one to know one. <laughs> Look, I don't want to fight you. Because, you know, you should... Respect your elders, but don't you think you're a little old for this competition? <laughs> I'm 36. Oh, I'm so sorry. If if it makes you feel any better, you're a lot younger than you look. <laughs> How dare you? There no one go, speaks baby. to me that way. Aw, you gonna cry, Boomer? <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck with me, Linda Monroe. I'm your worst nightmare. That night, Gerald finds Linda in the backyard, tossing a baton into the air and failing to catch it. He checks his Rolex. What are you doing out here? It's wine o'clock. Practicing. For what? The Honey Queen pageant. Honey Qu Are you serious? You have to have a talent, and this is mine. Twirling this goddamn stick. She throws the baton. It comes crashing down on her head. Shit! You okay? Here, let me see. There you'll live. No, I won't. I don't have a talent. I can't do anything. But it's all your fault. How's it his fault? in my life. Man, how'd I do that, baby? You never encouraged me. Now I have no skills. I can't even twirl a stick. Gerald grabs his crotch, grinning seductively. <laughs> I got a stick for you. Let him in. Stop trying to cheer me up. All right. Gerald, tell me the truth. Am I going to humiliate myself? Am I going to lose to a 23-year-old barista? <laughs> barista? She called me a boomer, Gerald! I'm not a boomer! I am a super cool millennial. <laughs> it's not fair. I don't even think my dad's going to cheat for me. Hey, you don't need him to cheat for you. You're successful, you're hot as hell, and you're smart. Can cheat for yourself. Cheat for myself? You remember that skiing competition in college? Remember that uppity snow bunny broad? I'm so cute. I'm gonna win. You remember what you did to her skis? Prove I did anything. The cop show sure couldn't. Mm hmm. I knew right then you were the woman I would spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> Right, so these two guys are you evil. Win, honey queen. But I've got to do it my way. Destroy them all. God, I love you. Over the next week, I thought they were going to make love. In rare form. A mastermind. An artist at work. No deed too dirty. No blow too low. From the country club office, she phones a fellow contestant. Hi, is this Chloe Patterson? I'm with the Hatchetfield Boating Society. I'm calling to tell you you've won our annual giveaway. 
Yes, that's right. A private, all-expense-paid cruise aboard the SS Valiant, one of the largest luxury yachts on the Great Lakes. Oh, but don't worry. You'll be back in plenty of time for the Honey Festival. She hangs up and turns to the man seated across the desk. Make sure the trip's longer than expected. A salty old sea captain <laughs> chomps a corncob pipe and gives a knowing wink. Yar, there be rough waters ahead. The next day, what's his name? White, another top honey queen contender pleads with her plastic surgeon. You don't understand. I need these collagen injections, and I need them now. In his study, Gerald leans back in his chair. Well, Mrs. Wright, I can schedule you for the end of the month. That won't be any good. Oh, uh, Mr. Pageant, can't you squeeze me in? Gerald looks at his completely empty calendar. Nah, sorry, I'm all booked. At an overpriced cafe, Linda runs into a few of her closest frenemies, Mary, Judith, and Heather, a.k.a. the biggest gossips in Hatchetfield. Linda! Darling! Oh, hello, ladies. I couldn't help but overhear you all discussing the Honey Queen pageant. Well, Judith was just saying that she thinks Liz Cunningham should win. She really is such a dear, and when the judges hear all about her charity work? Ooh. Mm hmm Liz Cunningham. Interesting. You don't think that would cause a bit of a scandal? What do you mean? Well, the Honey Queen is supposed to be the soul of Hatchetfield. And Liz is from Clydesdale. Is she now? In a matter of hours, Liz's secret is all over town. She's in the supermarket when an email arrives, strongly <laughs> encouraging her to drop out of the pageant and go back where she came from. Her husband comforts her as she sobs on the floor. How'd they find out? They're approached by a store clerk. Uh, uh excuse me, ma'am. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. We don't want your business here. But I moved here ten years ago. Once a chemist, always a chemist. Now take your money and get out. <laughs> that night, Linda sits up in bed, on the line with a friend of a friend. And Amber's job transfer went through? She starts Monday. Wonderful. She's going to love Dubuque. I just know it. She hangs up and crosses Amber Brady off her list of contestants to get rid of. Goodbye, Miss Brady. I'd say go to hell, but you're already moving there. <laughs> now on to the main event. There's only one name left on her hit list. Zoe Chambers. The next day, Zoe barges into Chestnut Estates, Hatchetfield's finest assisted living facility. She forces a smile and enters the room of Miranda Mima Chambers, her sickly old granny. Hi, Mima. Zoe. Hello, dear. I heard you were a little under the weather. How are you feeling? Oh, much better. That's great. <laughs> You want to do some cross-stitching and watch Fox News with me? Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Later, Zoe half-heartedly fiddles with her needle and thread as Mima asks, You still going to church like a good girl? Every Sunday. And, uh, how's your brother, um, uh, Zachary? Has he found a girlfriend yet? I don't know if that's what he's looking for. If you know what I mean. I'm afraid I don't know. Everyone else knows. I don't know why he's keeping it from you. You're so open-minded. Mima mutes Fox News, looking furious. <laughs> keeping what from me? Well, he and Josh have been roommates for a really long time. Haven't they, Mima? Outside, Zoe tries to rub off the stink of old people with copious amounts of hand sanitizer. Her phone buzzes. Hello? It's her brother, Zach. Zoe, what the hell? Mima's cutting me out of her will? Did, did you say something to her? I don't know 
what you're talking about, Doc. Did you out me to our homophobic grandmother, you greedy snake? Maybe this is karma. Wasn't he with Josh from the me. girl? <laughs> the redhead girl? She hangs up just as a police car screeches into the parking lot. It swerves to a stop in front of Zoe, and the passenger seat window rolls down. Inside, Officer Sam Sweetly, Zoe's scummy cop boyfriend, loves <laughs> Love the transition. So how's Grandma? Ugh, better. God damn it! She hops in as Sam revs the engine. I don't know why you bother. You think I like coming here? The old bat's loaded. Just drive. Mm, they tear off onto the streets of Hatcherfield. That night, the squad cars parked near the edge of Witchwood Forest. With Sam and Zoe lying in the back seat post-coitus, they share a joint, blowing smoke out the open windows. <sighs> oh, that's good shit. What's it called again? Jeff Blim looks like Jesus. This loser I used to work with hooked me up. You know, every woman who's ever won this pageant got out of Hatchetfield and never looked back. On a bigger and better things. That's gonna be me. You're gonna light up Broadway, Zoe. Honey Queen. That's my ticket out of this one horse put on piece of shit motherfucking town. You're taking me with you, right? You're funny. <laughs> Let me hold your gun again. <laughs> As Zoe pretends to blast her haters with Sam's firearm, a mysterious man with a long camera lens secretly watches from afar, snapping some very incriminating photos. This, this, Miss Chambers, you dirty girl. <laughs> The next day, Linda's SUV purrs at the edge of Oakley Park. The passenger door swings open and the man with the long lens, Malone, Linda's private investigator, gets Malone. in. Malone! So, what have you got for me? He hands her a folder filled with pictures of Zoe. She's no Girl Scout, I'll tell you that. A couple of boyfriends, one of them's a married cop. A typical party girl with an attitude. But here is the kicker. Her silver-haired granny... Think she's an angel. <laughs> Linda flips through the photos. Satisfied, she hands Malone an envelope of cash. I can work with that. Thank you, Malone. Now get out. You smell like a urinal fucked in ashtray. As he opens the door, he notices... Hey, uh... There's some candy in the crack of this seat here. You gonna eat it, or, uh... Help yourself. He happily fishes out some peppermints and pops them into his mouth. Good luck in the competition. I'm rooting for you. These are the best Joe Richter rolls. rolls outside. From his car seat in the back, River calls up to Linda. Mommy, why did you pay that stinky man? <laughs> Secrets, River. Everyone has them. Secrets? Like when you wrestle the tennis coach. That's right, dear. And you're Mommy's little secret keeper, aren't you? Damn straight. As night falls, Zoe strolls into the lobby of the Starlight Theater. A pageant volunteer runs up to her, nervously. You're late for rehearsal. Rehearsal starts when I get here. I don't know if that's gonna fly with the new volunteer director. He's a real hard ass. Inside the theater, Linda sits with the rest of the Honey Queen contestants. On stage, the volunteer director, Professor Henry Hidgen, begins <laughs> to address them. All right, ladies, this is your pageant. Your moment in the spotlight. But it's also my directorial debut, and I'm not going to let you ruin it. <laughs> the show begins with a spotlight on me. The show Master begins Sam. with a spotlight on me. Yeah, That's how Robert Mannion would have done it. I sing a Honey Queen song. Audience is on their feet cheering my name. Then you girls come out and whatever, stand there. But this is very important. I want the eventual winner to be placed directly to my right. So is Zoe here yet? Right here, Hedge. Then we're ready to begin from the top. 
After rehearsal, the contestants gather their things and head for the parking lot. Storm clouds gather in the I like Robert Mannion's better. slides out the back door and Robert Mannion's Professor Higgins. Linda runs to catch up. Oh, Zoe. What? I just wanted to say that you really impressed me in rehearsal today. Yeah. And I didn't realize you had such a lovely voice. You're quite a talent, and you fight for what you want. I respect that. Thanks. For a mom, you're in pretty good shape. I respect that. Hmm. Then, here we are, standing in mutual respect of each other. <laughs> I have to admit, you may very well deserve to win. That's why it's such a shame you're dropping out. <laughs> what? From her bag, Linda removes the foil. I'm on Team Linda Monroe. She tosses it to Zoe. Take a look at this. Oh, go ahead, keep it. I have plenty of copies. Zoe leaves through the stack, trying not to look shaken. Okay, you got some pictures of me. <laughs> so what? I look good in these. I might even gram this one. <laughs> Funny you should mention gram. Your Mima? That's what you call your grandmother, How right? does she know that? I wonder what she would think if she found out about your behavior. Oh, that is a married man in that photo, isn't it? And what are you smoking? Linda... Please, you, you, you can't tell my poor Mima. I know I've done some bad things, but I am trying to be better. I really am. Linda don't care about that. You gonna cry? <laughs> you don't understand. <clears throat> she has a weak heart. I'm begging you. If you show her these pictures, it would kill her. <gasps> and you'd love that, wouldn't you? You are now the sole benefactor in her will. Well... Don't you worry about poor Mima's heart. Some of my friends at the Historical Society have set up a special fund. She is a town treasure, after all. The first woman to swim the Nantucket Channel. <laughs> We're going to make sure she gets the best possible care. Mima's going to be around for a long time. Certainly long enough to disinherit a hash-smoking homewrecker. <laughs> So you see, you will be dropping out, or you can kiss that money goodbye. You're pure evil. Me? Well, that can't be. <laughs> I'm about to be crowned Honey Queen, the sweetest woman in Hatchetfield. Bye, bitch. Linda Monroe through first blood. Zoe tears through her bedroom as rain beats the window. She's stomping, fuming. That monster! That vicious old fart! Sam lays on the bed, flipping through the pictures. Zoe, relax. Relax? <laughs> relax? Winning Honey Queen was gonna make me trend, Sam! Fucking trend! That's how you get parts in big productions now! By trending, stupid! Zoe... She's trying to blackmail you. She can't do that if you take away her leverage. She's got a million copies of these things. How are we gonna get rid of them all? Getting rid of the pictures is not what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna kill the grandma? It's the sky. Back at Chestnut Estates, Sam holds up his badge for the caregiver at the front desk. Hi, uh, Officer Sam Sweetly. I need to have a word with Miranda Chambers regarding an ongoing investigation. I know it's past visiting hours, but, uh, I'm a cop. Electric blue fills Oh, the he's room really gonna kill her? The door creaks open. Sam stands at the foot of the bed, smiling down at the sleeping granny. Hey there, Mima. Don't get up. I'm just gonna have a little look at your chart here. From a plastic bin bolted to the baseboard, Sam retrieves Mima's list of prescribed pills. That is a lot of medications. It'd be a shame if things got a little... mixed up. Thunder rolls. 
as Sam starts to change the recommended dosage for all of Mima's medications. So is Sam! She dead! Next day, Linda slams her foot in frustration. Stop! <clears throat> Stop! <clears throat> her pianist abruptly ends the musical accompaniment. Sweaty and flush, Linda... Is that the first time that piano dude was on Nightmare Time? Rehearsal rooms, ...catching her breath. Knowing her act could use some work, she's brought in professional help. She turns to the choreographer she flew in from New York. Trevor, the choreography is still too complicated. Make it simpler. Simple and sexy. Linda, if it were any simpler, you'd be sitting down. I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Her ears prick up. Faint music bleeds through the rehearsal room walls. Do you hear that? What is that? I don't know. Sounds good. It, Smack. it does sound Smack good. for complimenting the competition. Get out! Linda stomps down the hall and throws open the doors to the main theater. On stage, Zoe's song for the pageant ends with a big finish. In the audience, a small crowd of volunteers and stagehands leap to their feet, oh, applauding. Oh, thought it was gonna be a song. Bravo, Zoe, bravo! <laughs> Bravo, Zoe, bravo! Hitchens approaches sheepishly, a script in his hands. Uh, <coughs> Zoe, um, I was wondering if I could talk to you about a little project of my own, a uh, musical that I'm currently trying to secure the funds for. It's mainly a male cast, but there is a juicy supporting role that you might be right for. Zoe glances down at the manuscript. Working boys? I don't do bit parts. Change it to working girls and we'll talk. Linda steps onto the stage as Higgins scurries away. What was that little performance for? I know it wasn't for the pageant next week. <laughs> Actually, like Me must dead. It is. Did you like it? No, but I hope you did. Because it's going to cost you. Linda, could you give your talk <clears throat> energy to yourself today? I'm grieving. My Mima, she... She passed away last night. No. She went peacefully in her sleep, thank God. It's so sad, I'll just have to console myself. With my inheritance money, all ten thousand dollars of it! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! Who's more evil, Linda or... Zoe? God, you're cheap. Cheap? No, I think not. You're talking to a girl who only needs two roommates now. I'm gonna live it up. I'm gonna buy myself a switch, bitch. Now, if you'll excuse me, we're gonna run the song again. Enraged, Linda turns on her heels and makes for the exit. And Linda? Thanks for the pics. They really are blowing up on Insta. That's it. Now the gloves come off. Uh-oh! Days later, an SUV pulls up to a homeless man <laughs> sitting on the sidewalk. The car's window rolls down, and Linda glares at him. Hey, you. You want some money? Spare change for the homeless? Uh-uh. You're going to work. Home. Don't get in. Just follow the car. The SUV peels off, and the homeless man hurries after. <laughs> later, Gerald walks into Zoe's place of employment a local coffee shop called Beanies. He holds the door open for the homeless man, who has his face shaved, his hair coiffed, and wears a stylish designer suit. Gerald rushes to the front counter. Behind it is Zoe, swiping away at her phone. Excuse me, miss? We need a table. Then sit at one. I'm busy. Oh, no, uh, no you don't get it. We're wondering if uh, we could rope off that table in the corner. Mr. Broadley likes his privacy. Gerald motions to the homeless man in his fancy disguise. He doesn't want people coming up to him giving him unsolicited headshots and resumes. Why would they do that? Oh, well, he's a casting director. One of the biggest in New York City. A casting director? In Hatchetfield? Just for the Honey Festival. He's got a mansion out in Starry Cove, but... He likes to come to quaint little coffee shops when he's casting. Yeah, we're going through the audition tapes, but we can't seem to find the right girl for the lead of this new Broadway show. 
we send us all these sopranos. But what we really need <laughs> is a belter. Someone who can belt for hours on end. If only the right girl would just appear, we'd snatch her up and take her away from all this. We're going to be here a while, so uh, could we get some coffee? Sure. She dumps the pot she's been serving from. Not this. I spat in this. As she starts to brew a new pot, Gerald flashes her a smile. <laughs> Thanks. You've been really helpful. You're a pleasure to work with. And you've got a great look. Huh. Gerald notices a nearby tip jar. He reads the small sign beside it. Tip for a song. That's funny. Here you go. Gerald drops a dollar in the jar. Then, grinning wickedly, he takes a seat next to the homeless man. Zoe watches him with stars <coughs> in her eyes. She's been waiting for a moment like this her entire life. A chance to impress a real live casting director. She takes a deep breath. <laughs> Is he Joey right there? All right, Zoe. You can do this. I'm not throwing away my shot. Moments later, Hamilton. music blares over the cafe's sound system. Gerald and the homeless man look up to see Zoe leap over the counter and start to sing. Black coffee, I'm your coffee gal. If you're looking to spice up your drink, caramel or toffee, I'm your coffee pal. If you're looking for something sweet, no shame in a lot of sugar or a ton of cream. Ask for all the pumps you want. You could end up with a fix of your dreams. I'm the latte, I'll say you asked about. I can fix you up with the stuff. Yeah. I'm the latte, I'll say with all the clout. And what you want, I got in the back and front. It's hard oh! Love this song. Outside beanies, dressed in an inconspicuous coat and sunglasses, is Linda. She holds up a wad of cash and waits for passers-by to enter the coffee shop. As a man in a suit heads for the entranceway, Linda offers him a 20. Here. Buy a coffee, tip the girl, keep five for yourself. Got it? Paul Matthews shrugs and takes the money. Sure. <laughs> I think this might be the best Nightmare Time episode ever. If you are ever. Boy, you better, better be bold. Hey! Give me a name to scribble down onto your cup. Your order best be for one. I've been known to break the two of you up. I'm the latte, hot tea. closing time, Zoe sees the last of the customers out the door. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. She turns to Gerald and the homeless man, who are rising from their table, her eyes filled with hope and desperation. So, did I get the part? Mr. Broadley was very impressed. Weren't you, Mr. Broadley? Oh, yeah. Latte, latte. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Gerald grabs the homeless man and drags him toward the exit. You may be getting a call from us very soon. Okay. Do you need my number? Oh, no. We're casting directors. I'm confused. How is Ted and homeless man the same the homeless age? man outside and the door slams behind them. Yes. yes. Across the street, Linda watches Zoe celebrate through a pair of binoculars. Mm. Zoe, Zoe, the pageant's tomorrow night. Shouldn't you be taking care of your voice? 
The next morning, Zoe emerges from her bedroom. She rubs sleep from her eyes and plods toward the apartment's singular bathroom. The toilet flushes and her roommate, Haley, walks out holding her stomach. Morning, Zoe. Sorry it stinks in there. I can't stop dumping ass. <laughs> Look at that pageant tonight. Zoe responds with a croaking, Thanks. Her eyes go wide. Her hands go to her throat. Her ultimate trump card, her voice, is gone. Oh, shit. That night, thousands of citizens fill Main Street for the town's most anticipated event of the year. Live music and sweet smells fill the air. Strands of twinkling light shine down on a hundred local vendors. The Hatchetfield Honey Festival is in full swing. At the corner of Main and Third, a crowd streams into the historic Starlight Theater for the night's main event, the Honey Queen pageant. Inside, people file into their seats noisily. Near the front of the house, Gerald sits with his four boys. The eldest, Trent, obnoxiously kicks the seat in front of him. The man sitting there turns around, glaring. Stop that! <laughs> he notices the boy's father looking through the program. Good job, Bruce, please. He's kicking your seat. You do something. Unbelievable! The man turns back around and Trent gives him another hard kick. River tugs his dad's sleeve. Dad, is mom gonna win? Are you kidding? It's mom. Who could stop her? A figure appears next to Gerald's seat. He looks up to find Roman Murray scowling down at him. Gerald. Did Linda Monroe die in Black Friday? I can't remember. Yes. Roman. Our list of contestants has dwindled significantly. Some deserving women have dropped out, moved from town. One is on a yacht in the middle of the goddamn Caribbean. I don't know what you and my daughter are up to, but I will not see the dignity of this pageant tarnished by anyone. I will be fair in my judgment tonight. Linda will get no special treatment from me. Now when is she ever? Insolence. She'd better not embarrass herself. Or me. If watching your daughter give something her all embarrasses you, then you should be fucking embarrassed. Enjoy the show. Gerald, you are brutish and vulgar. Yeah, yeah, I'm yours, old man. Backstage is a buzz as contestants One of them's gonna between dressing and die. Their I can feel it. Finishing their makeup. Higgins rushes by Maybe more both. antsy than anyone. Ooh, all right, everyone. Curtain and five. Curtain and five. At a mirror lined with huge round light bulbs, Zoe chugs the last of her tea and chases it with a shot of lemon juice. I wish Robert Mannion was doing Professor Higgins. She throws her mug across the change room. Shit! Shit! This can not do shit! In the doorway, Linda appears, dressed to kill. Make some good tips last night? Oh yeah, I did. And did you impress Mr. Broadley? How do you know about that? Because I sent him genius. His assistant you talked to? That was my husband. Really? Do you know if I got the part? He's not a casting director, you idiot! I played you. I bought your precious little voice for 560 bucks. See? Told you you were cheap. <laughs> Linda turns and struts out. Zoe's left alone. Her rage boils over. Back in the theater, the house lights dim. The curtain rises and a spotlight falls on Henry Higgins. Welcome, everyone, to the 75th Annual Honey Queen Pageant! Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. And now, without further ado, let's get to know our contestants with a bit of Q and A. First up, a teacher from Hatchetfield Elementary, it's Miss Kayla Brown. Higgins makes his way across the stage to the end of the lineup, where an obnoxious teenage stagehand gives him a note card. On it is a randomly chosen question for Miss Brown to answer. Zoe watches, getting an idea. 
While the crowd's focused on Higgins questioning Kayla, Zoe slips backstage and approaches the teen volunteer. <clears throat> we give out the questions, right? Give me an easy one, will ya? Oh, no. I'm not gonna let you use your feminine wiles to tempt me into compromising the integrity of this competition. <laughs> you don't get it, dude. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass if you don't give me an easy question. Okay, don't hurt me. Hitchens makes his way down the line of contestants. As they finish answering their questions, they exit the stage. Soon, Hitchens comes to Zoe. Next stop, you may recognize her from last year's production of Grease. Hatchetfield's favorite star on the rise, it's Zoe Chambers. Yeah! The crowd hoots and hollers. Zoe smiles, coyly and waves. Thanks, everybody. Sorry, I'm a little under the weather. Go easy on me. Aww. Linda rolls her eyes. Oh, please. Zoe's plant in the audience, Sam, shouts out, We think you sound sexy! <laughs> Thanks. That's really sweet. Now, Zoe, are you ready for your randomly chosen question? I hope so. The obnoxious teen hands Zoe's question to Higgins. Remember, there is no wrong answer. We just want to get to know the real you. All right. Zoe, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Easy. I wouldn't go anywhere. Because there's nowhere I'd rather be than right here with all of you. In Hatchet Field. <laughs> you know where I certainly wouldn't go? Clivesdale. <laughs> fuck them. Yeah! The people of Hatchet Field are easy yeah! to please. Yeah! Zoe's done. They leap to their feet, cheering. In the crowd, Paul nods. Yes. Yes. Fuck them. Fuck them straight to hell. <laughs> Assholes. The audience starts chanting. <laughs> So we, so we, so we, so we. The guy seated in front of Gerald screams. Just count it! Count it now! Go Nighthawks! The crowd goes wild, and Zoe struts off stage. As she passes Linda, she leans in and whispers. Top that. As soon as she's in the wings, Zoe grabs the obnoxious team. He cowers. I'm not done with you yet, Dorcas. Oh, oh, please, don't make me cheat again. I already feel dirty. I want you to write the hardest question you can think of. It better be impossible, or I'll stop you in a fucking locker. Finally, Pigeons makes his way to the last contestant in the lineup. And now, stay-at-home mother of four and recreational boat enthusiast, Linda Monroe. Crickets from the crowd. Linda is not well liked around town. In fact, she only gets cheers from two people. Woo! Let's go, Lynn! Yay, Mom! As Linda convinces herself that people aren't cheering because they're horrible, the obnoxious teen hands Higgins the final note card, the one Zoe made him write. Linda, are you ready for your question? I'm ready for anything. Here it is. Given the stagnation of Congress, the collusion of the managerial class with corporate-friendly judges, and a campaign finance system in desperate need of reform, what specific bills and policies would you implement to unrig the economy, pull back the undue influence of the military-industrial complex, and address the looming inevitability of mass automation? And how is all of this affected by climate change? What? Would you like me to repeat the question? Yeah. No, thank you. <clears throat> Linda swallows the lump forming in her throat. Her stomach drops and her hands go clammy. Um. She didn't understand a word Higgins said. Her <laughs> eyes dart around the theater looking for anything that might be able to help her. The spotlight burns. The crowd stares. Oh. Uh... Linda spots Gerald in the audience. But he's just as clueless as she is. Um... At the judge's table, Linda spots her father. A look of utter shame washes over him. Yeah, I'm crying over here. Linda remembers why she's here. And why she's not going to let anything stop her. 
She grabs Higgins, pulls him close, and whispers into his ear, Help me through this and I'll fund your fucking musical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, wow. What a mouthful this one is. But it's really not as complicated as it seems. Basically, all it's asking is, what would you do to make society a little more fair? Lots of popular ideas floating around, like have the rich pay their fair share of taxes. <laughs> Not on your life, socialist. <laughs> narrow our focus to just hatchet feet. What's one thing that could be done to make our town a little better? I know I, for one, can't stand those potholes on Main Street. <laughs> there are no wrong answers. Just one simple thing you'd like to see fixed. Linda searches herself. She digs down deep, and there it is. The perfect answer. The only answer. Okay. I hate homeless people. I think the town would be better if we got rid of them. <laughs> the crowd is silent. Black-jawed. Gerald sinks in his chair. Higgins thinks quick. <laughs> the budget for a show on the line. Oh, I see what you mean. You hate that there are people suffering from homelessness. We should strengthen the social safety net so that none of our fellow citizens should ever experience such extreme poverty. <laughs> sure, just get them off the park benches. It's disgusting. Higgins figures it's best to end this as soon as possible, and he ushers her off stage. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, let's hear it for her, folks. Uh, very Who's the most woman. evil, Linda, Higgins, or Zoe? And now that you've gotten to know our contestants, let's see what they can do in the talent portion of tonight's show. Miss Brown, take it away! As Caleb Brown rolls on a tray of wine glasses and starts rubbing... Because Higgins killed... Trying to make music... Probably like Higgins four people, Linda if I remember correctly. You couldn't have just gone with Fix the Potholes, could you? I said what everyone else was thinking. All right. What do you say we start hashing out a budget for working boys? Uh, uh, uh. When the crown's on my head, Henry. Not a moment before. She walks off, and Higgins wonders how he's gonna pull this one off. Back in the dressing room, Zoe's roommate, Haley, squeezes a bottle of honey into a fresh cup of tea. All right, Zoe. I hit every sand at the festival. This is the best honey in Hatchetfield. If this tea doesn't work, nothing will. She hands the cup to Zoe and scurries around to zip the back of her dress. You better work, Haley. One of the roommates has got to go, and you've been dumping ass a lot lately. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. Back on stage, a woman finishes her juggling routine, picking up all the bowling pins she dropped along the way, and Higgins returns to usher her off. All right, let's hear it again for Ashley Robbins. Waiting in the wings, Zoe holds the hot tea and closes her eyes. Okay, here we go. She gulps it down. And now, let's welcome back to the stage Miss Zoe Chambers and her enchanting voice. I'm gonna choose. Zoe takes center stage. She crosses her fingers and wishes with all her heart. Please let my voice come back. What's she going to sing now? Queen. She's never wanted anything so badly. She opens her mouth to sing and croaks out a pathetic, raspy whimper. Her face turns bright red. Tears well up in her eyes. The song's ruined. Her life is ruined. Sensing the moment of weakness, Gerald points and laughs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Elsewhere in the audience, Sam yells. Stop laughing. Gerald's four boys join in. <laughs> I said stop laughing! Soon the whole audience follows Gerald's lead. <laughs> Pigeon spots the opportunity to take out Linda's main competition and one-ups the laughter. A boo! Boo! <laughs> Boo! Boo! Zoe bursts into tears. Damn. Sam gets up to run backstage as she makes for the wings, sobbing. She passes Linda, who smiles and claps. Encore! Encore! Backstage, Zoe runs into oh pigeons, her makeup running down her cheeks. 
You betrayed me, Hitch. I betrayed you, Zoe. Working girl. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Pigeon steps through the curtains with a flourish. Soon Sam's found Zoe. Oh, and man. He's patting her back. Uh, so I really think talk. Professor Hitchin's my favorite What's Sarkin that? character. I mean, you're hot. Who fucking cares if you can sing? When the audience is finally settled, Pigeon steps forward. And now. Linda Monroe. Linda takes the stage. She gonna do? Her head, bathed in backlight. I mean, you really think she's gonna do any better? The music kicks in. The spotlight hits. Linda's head pops up, and she sings. Welcome to me, you work a bee. I'll show you around the Linda Monroe colony. Oh! Oh. The only way to guarantee the longevity of the species You want it? You got it That's the leadership I provide it Keep yourself from getting too excited Cause once I'm through with you, you're uninvited You thirsty? No mercy, I'm the Deserving Unforgiving <laughs> I'm the Succeeding so I'm the I'm the upper class being you've been looking for Too much buzz around to ignore I'm the Clean beer Cool Babies. The time has come for you to show your loyalty I brought you in this bourgeoisie society But I can take you out just as easily I sold it, you bought it Y'all built this throne for me to flaunt it Now bring me the honey I've been looking for Or I'll use it to wipe the d 2k per day is what I lay Talking about the haters I lay on death's away You have six to eight, that's weeks to make Before you're underneath my boot, meeting your fate Can you <laughs> shoot your shot? The tables have turned, have they not? You thought it was my audition Now I'm the one and only kingpin I'm the You thirsty? No mercy I'm the Deserving I'm the I'm the upper class bee you've been looking for Too much buzz around to ignore I'm the Queen P.I.S. Queen of all the chaos Queen of all you love I love this stuff! Preparation, private oh! lessons, the expensive choreographer, they all pay off. She slays. She knocks them dead. When it's all over, the audience leaps to their feet, cheering. Between heavy breaths, Linda surveys the She crowd. didn't have to cheat! Jared, she would have won! And roaring proudly. No way! Except for the question and answer part. What a number! What a talent! <laughs> At the judge's table, Linda even spots her father, giving a soft, slow clap. Zoe watches from the wings, her mouth hanging open. You know, fuck this whole thing. We'll get you trending some other way. We'll get you a Twitch channel, a Minecraft in a bikini. Linda nods to her husband, and Zoe follows her gaze. The barista spots Gerald in the crowd, as River reaches up to tug his sleeve. Dad, can I go pee? I don't know, can you? As River squeezes through the standing ovation and down the center aisle toward the lobby, Zoe gets an idea. No. This isn't over. We just need some leverage. In the bathroom, <laughs> River finishes What's she gonna do now? And goes to wash his hands. He finds Sam waiting for him. He ain't gonna hey, kill him, right? Sport. How you doing? River backs away slowly. Sam advances. Hey, don't be scared. I'm a cop. Back in the dressing room, Linda's changing into her gown for the closing number. She spots Zoe in the mirror 
leaning against the doorway. I gotta hand it to you, Linda. That was one hell of a performance. Well, I paid enough for it. Yep. You fought. Is that the most epic Lauren Lockwood song? Rightfully yours. That's why it's such a shame. Can't think of any other song she did. Am I having deja vu? (laughs) You can't threaten me, copycat. There's one in Starship. Got your kid. And. What? My boyfriend just grabbed him. I think that's it? No! Where is he? Firebringer! What have you done with him? She's got songs in Firebringer. He's safe. And he'll stay that way. If he drop out right now. So, Linda, what do you want more? Honey Queen? Or your kid back? Which kid? <laughs> Hang on. She takes out her bedazzled phone. Which and kid? Sam. They wait for a text back. Bing. River. Damn it. How do I know it's not Trent pretending to be River? Huh? That'd be just like him. Let me see a picture. Zoe gets Sam to text one. She holds it out for Linda to inspect. She sees River trapped in the back of a squad car. The neon lights of the Starlight's marquee shine through the window. They're in the parking lot. Linda tries to distract Zoe as she inches her hand across the makeup counter. You're crossing a line, Zoe. Everything I've done has been deceitful and underhanded, but kidnapping? (laughs) You're never going to get away with this. That's where you're wrong. My boyfriend? He's a cop. He can make your son disappear. And the rest of the force will just look the other way. You know I'm right. So what should I tell Sam? (laughs) To let the kid go? Or to throw him off the Nantucket Bridge? At last... Linda's fingers reach what she was going for. She grabs it and throws it at Zoe. The baton! It hits Zoe's hand and sends her phone flying. Ah, shit! It hurts, doesn't it? Where'd she get a baton from? Linda pounces on Zoe, and the two tumble into the shadowy backstage of the star. On stage, the remaining acts play out. Gerald, noticing River's been gone... This would be so good! Live! I'm gonna go get your brother. Get an epic fight scene. Gerald steps into the bathroom, glancing under the stall doors, in search of River's shoes. River? You piss all over yourself again? But there's nobody in the bathroom at all. Huh. Who the hell is that kid? His phone buzzes. He checks the caller and answers. Linda? On the other end, Linda ducks behind a curtain. Gerald, for God's sake, shut up and listen to me! River's been kidnapped. Zoe's crazy cop boyfriend has him in the back of a squad car in the parking lot. Go get him. I got it. I'll kick his ass. You kick hers. I love you. Outside, the marquee lights... Jeff Blim versus Dylan Saunders. ...leaves through the parked cars looking for Sam. Squad car, squad car. Ah, shit. Backstage, Linda crawls behind a stack of flats as Zoe limps around looking for her. Linda's phone buzzes. Do you have him? No. Can't find the fucking car. Like you can never find your glasses? Look harder! Telling you, Linda, there's no squad car out here. Realizing the car must be unmarked, Linda tries to think of something. Then a small glimmer catches her eye. Under a nearby workbench, she spots Zoe's bedazzled iPhone. All right. The car's about to honk. Then he's going to get out. When he does, get him! Linda hangs up and rolls for the phone. Inside the unmarked squad car, Sam sits in the front seat awaiting instructions. Then, bing, he gets a text from Zoe's number that reads, Honk the horn. Sam thinks. He texts back, Why? This is so cool. All the... He gets a response. Everyone's a villain I said in this so. show. He shakes his head and turns to look at River through the partition. Women, right? <laughs> He shrugs and lays on the horn for a good five seconds. Outside, Gerald spots the car. 
Back in the driver's seat, Sam gets another text from who he thinks is Zoe. This one reads, Now get out of the car and close your eyes. Sam considers it, smiles, and replies. Will I get a big surprise if I do? Backstage, Linda rolls her eyes. Ugh, pervert. She texts, Don't talk back to me, cuck. Ooh, I like it when she's pushy. He complies Where's and gets Zoe out. Where's Zoe in all of this? He's standing there with his eyes closed when a big, beefy guy plows into his side. Ugh. Gerald tackles Sam, slamming him onto the pavement. He flips Sam over, crawls on top of him, and starts punching. Left, right, wham, wham! Sam kicks. Gerald flies into the side of the unmarked squad car. Whack! Sam spits a mouthful of blood. You're gonna be sorry you did that. Oh, yeah? You're a tough guy. No. I'm a cop. From under his coat, Sam whips out a gun. Uh-oh! The squad car's bulletproof windows keep River safe inside, but Gerald is hit. He grabs his shoulder and scurries off. Sam scrambles after him. Backstage, Linda's beneath a workbench. When it flips over, tools and paintbrushes scatter across the floor. Zoe stands there with a fire extinguisher raised above her head. She brings it crashing down. Linda dives from its path. Zoe's phone, however, is lying right there. Smack! Zoe lifts the fire extinguisher, realizing what she's done. She looks down at the shattered remains of her most prized possession. Her veins bulge. Her blood bubbles, thinking of all the things she never got to back up on there. My pictures! She whips around to find Linda ascending a ladder to the catwalk above. Zoe follows. In the parking lot, Sam shuffles through a line of cars, looking for Gerald his gun at the ready. Where are you? You think you can hit a cop and walk out of here alive? On the ground, Sam notices a trail of blood. Gerald's blood. He follows it, taunting his wounded prey. And it's not just gonna be you. I'm gonna kill River. Then your other brats. Then I'm gonna put a bullet in your wife's skull. Sam comes to a turn in the trail of blood, where Gerald seems to have ducked between two cars for cover. But I'm gonna start with you. He rounds the corner, gun first, but to his surprise, there's no one there. Instead, Gerald's blood-soaked dress shirt lays on the ground. Huh? Trail of blood leads here. Bloody shirt, but no guy. Well, this is a head-scratcher. Man, am I just a shitty cop? The lights on Gerald and Linda's SUV ignite and the engine roars. Vroom! Gerald slams down the gas pedal and the vehicle charges forward, heading straight for Sam. Ah! He fires his gun. SUV's windshield shatters. The car plows into Sam and crashes into the side of a big sedan. Crunch! Sam is crushed. Gerald's face smacks the steering wheel. His blood splatters. Above the stage, Zoe pulls herself onto the catwalk. She limps across the raised platform as the final contestants perform their talents below. But where is Linda? Just as the thought enters Zoe's mind, Linda drops down from the lighting rig above. She lands on Zoe's back, wrapping a length of rope around her neck. Zoe flings herself forward, flipping Linda over her and the catwalk's hand rails. Linda hangs, holding on for dear life. Zoe smiles down at her and inches her foot toward Linda's hand. Stop! She jams her heel down, breaking three of Linda's fingers. Damn. Linda pulls her hand from under Zoe's foot. Now she's dangling by one arm. Far below is the stage floor, and certain death. Zoe places her shoe just above Linda's hand. Hey, Linda. I want you to die knowing I'm gonna be the honey queen. I'm getting out of this shitty town, and I'm going straight to Broadway. Yes, Zoe. You're a star on the rise. 
just as Zoe's about to bring down her foot. Linda swings her free arm onto the catwalk, grabbing hold of a large sandbag. She yanks it with all her might, pulling it over the edge. It hurtles toward the stage below, pulling the rope it's tied to, the rope that's wrapped around Zoe's neck. Flip! When the bag's only halfway down, the rope snaps taut. Thrown over a beam in the lighting rig, it pulls tight, lifting Zoe into the air. She reaches up, trying to free herself, but it's no use. Her neck is caught in the tangles. Her eyes bulge, then roll back. She chokes, twitches, and finally goes limp. Zoe Chambers sways softly in the rafters of the Starlight Theater, dead as a doornail. Linda pulls herself onto the catwalk. Just Linda Monroe, baby! Nearby. It's a text from Gerald. It reads, River's safe. Everything's okay. <laughs> Linda lays back on the catwalk and breathes a sigh of relief. <sighs> In the SUV, Gerald's phone falls to the floor as he loses the strength to hold it. Blood flows from his three gunshot wounds and he slumps over in the driver's seat. So Gerald's dead, Jeff Bloom's dead, talent portion, and a brief Zoe's dead. The judges to deliberate. All the contestants, save Zoe Chambers, line the stage. Linda looks out at the audience, exhausted, as Higgins steps forward. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the judges have rendered their verdict. The envelope, please. The winner, the contestant who best embodies the spirit of this town, the sweetest woman in Hatchetfield. This year's Honey Queen is. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God. After the show, Linda stands backstage in the empty theater, her phone to her ear. Yeah, I think this is the best Out in the car, Nightmare Time episode. Phone rings. Out of all of them. Rings and goes to voicemail. Uh, you've reached Dr. Gerald Monroe of Inner Beauty Cosmetic Clinic. I'm not available right now, but if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Gerald? I did it. <laughs> they all tried to stop me, but I did it. <laughs> we, we did it. I want to thank you, Gerald, for believing in me. I know I'm not the easiest person to live with. She's actually being sincere. I can be cold and cruel. And I don't remember the last time I said it, but... But I... I love you, Gerald. Is it too late because Gerald's dead? There's also a body hanging from the fucking rafters in here, and I need you to help me get rid of it, so where the hell are you? <laughs> Linda. Linda quickly hangs up and spins around to find her father. Roman shifts uncomfortably. It's hard for me to admit. Is that a real mustache? Wrong. But I was wrong. I didn't think you had what it takes to win this competition. But I'm proud of you, Pig. Honey Queen. A tear rolls down Linda's cheeks. For 36 years she's tried to earn his respect. And now, at long last, she has it. Come with me. I really should wait for Gerald. You know, find the kids. Of course, that's not all that's on her mind. She glances up to Zoe's body hanging in the rafters. Linda, don't worry. We'll take care of everything. All right. Later, Linda sits across from Roman in the back of his Rolls Royce. The car drifts down an empty road. They've left downtown far behind. Outside, the night is pitch black. 
The Rolls Royce pulls off the main street and onto a dirt path. They bob gently as the car heads into Witchwood Forest. Where are we going? To the ceremony. The Honey Queen is the guest of honor. A ceremony? In the woods? It's tradition. One that dates back to the very foundation of the church. What church? The Church of the Starry Children. A shudder runs down Linda's spine at the sound of the name. They may be gone, but through us they live on. You see, the Honey Festival is about more than an overblown street fair and a silly talent show. It's about ringing in the season. The season of Niblinefim. Outside, a nighthawk screams. A timber wolf howls. It's as if the whole forest is alive. Alive and hungry. I have no idea what you're talking about. You will. Very soon. The car rolls to a stop. Here we are. The chauffeur opens her door and Linda steps outside. Standing around the car are a dozen figures. They wear black robes and silver masks. They bow to Linda, who steps back in confusion. What the hell is this? It's said that when the Honey Queen is crowned, she leaves Hatchetfield forever. On to bigger and better things. That's true. In a way, she comes here. For the offering. The club figures park. Beyond them is the heck's going on? by a ring of torches. Linda nearly gags. Illuminated by the firelight is a mound of mutilated pig carcasses. Their eyes are blank, mouths agape. Flies swarm around spilled intestines and congealed blood. God, that stinks! What the hell do you think is out here, and why would you offer it a bunch of dead pigs? Oh, no, no, no. That's not the offering. You are. Linda looks into her father's eyes. What? Madness. Enjoy. Nibley is unique amongst his brothers. For one night a year, on the eve of the Honey Festival, Niblinefim, a lord in black, may walk upon the earth, if he is given the flesh to inhabit. And when he comes, he must feast. Linda, you didn't win the competition because of that egregious song. I'm not a fan of rap music. You won because of everything else you were willing to do. We know about the dead girl in the rafters. That's why you won. You wanted it the most. You were the hungriest. Nibley is a creature of hunger, of desire, passion. That's what makes you taste so sweet to him. The sweetest woman in Hatchetfield. The cloaked figures grab hold of Linda. They yank her arms behind her back and secure her wrists with a zip tie. What do you think you're doing? Get your hands off me! Linda, don't embarrass me. You wanted to be the Honey Queen and that comes with certain obligations. The masked cultists drag Linda towards the pile of gore. Gerald! Gerald, help me! Gerald can't help you now. He's dead. But don't worry about the boys. In exchange for our offering, Nibley will gift us wealth and power. We will raise your sons to be strong, charismatic men. Just like me. No! Farewell, Honey Queen. Blessed she be. Thank you for this bountiful harvest. And the farmer said to mock it with you. The cloaked maniacs throw Linda to the ground before the mound of corpses. They chant words in a lost language from beyond time and space. Linda watches in horror as the dead pigs writhe with terrible undulations. Some internal heat makes the pigs' eyes burst in their sockets. Their skin bubbles. Their bodies collapse. Then the flesh molds into a new shape. A creature. A furry pink nightmare. Hundreds of pig teeth coalesce at the end of its worm-like neck to form a grotesque smile. 
The mouth tears open, and the Lord in black roars into the world. Oh my god! Oh my god! Nibble and Nephilim licks his huge lips and smiles down at his offer. Nibbly grabs hold of her and lifts the screaming woman to his hungry, drooling mouth. His jaws slam shut, and so ends the reign of Linda Monroe, Hatchetfield's newest honey queen. Hey, that was a great episode. That was so good. This song sounds like Pinball Wizard by The Who. That was a great episode. I think this might be my favorite all time. And episode one of season one. So that was, that's my second favorite. But this one, I think this one's the best. I like uh, Zoe's song as well. I like Chuck Slim as well. Wow. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for more this morning. The way, Jeff Flynn, we out.